Okay, good morning, uh, all of you. We'll start our proceeding today. You all should have following things in mind. In all electronic systems, uh, there are two signals which are always omnipresent. One, of course, is the signal which you are, uh, which is your input signal. The other is the noise. And it is the signal to noise ratio which decide whether you will get the signal as the output or the noise as the output. Okay. And in particular, low amplitude, low frequency signals, which are more like a hum as we call, is more damaging to the performance because they can be passed in almost all systems. Why did I say so? So, when you keep talking very small. Uh, volume you think you are actually not creating noise actually it creates more noise than you shout okay. Uh, this is of course a fun part of it. Uh, Let us consider uh, what we were doing last time we will still go through few of the slides and start in earnest the course itself. Okay. Why I want to show you further because uh, this is my belief that many of you question us over the years that what is the purpose of all this course for individual it may be varying differently you know for some people you are here because your parents asked you to appear in JE and for good luck you came here. Okay. For some you are expecting some 4 years to pass with all Moodai, Moodai Tech Fest, BAF, TAF, Order NAM okay. Okay. somehow that 4 years pass or dual degree student 5 year unfortunately for them. Okay. Uh, so they are just waiting for that time period to be over. If it becomes T is equal to N immediately they will be very happy. Okay. But there may be 10 percent maybe little more I hope so who are really interested in what we are teaching. So this course essentially is addressing more to those people who still believe that engineering is interesting and also useful in your career. Okay. If you can increase this number to 90 percent someday I think it will be great success for you as well as for me. Okay. Let us start analog design needs to consider handling of positive or negative last time we did last time we said so we just repeat from there. In case of analog and I will show you later biasing is very very important. Uh, linearity is essential I this one problem I will solve today or one expressions I will derive for you. Uh, we just now said noise you know since both signal and noise will go through a system and if your noise is higher the system does not tolerate it and then it will pass more noise than the signal. Okay. We also want lower drifts. The word drift is something uh, you are supposed to go on a particular course and you move from the course is called drift. So let us say power supply voltage has to be 1.5 volt and if it drifts to 1.4 or 1.6 you may have much more problem in at your hand when you saw the circuit performance. Similarly there are many other uh, parameters can drift temperature for example 25 degree is what we assume in all 27 degree we assume 300 degree Kelvin but in real life when circuits start functioning you, the heat, the, there is a heat dissipation in device everywhere and the board itself will get heated and the temperature may rise to as much as 35 to 40 degrees or may in worst case 100 degrees. Okay. So the performance of the circuit has very strong dependence on environment around and that is called drift problems. Of course, in many cases uh, there are two kinds of uh, problems one get one is called systematic that is we can predict if this happens this is going to so we a priori we know this is going to so we take care okay this is going to happen ahead like this so okay I will take care initially itself so when it starts I will take care but there is something which is non-systematic and they are random if they are random what can you do it happens okay and it can happen any instant of time okay. So, uh, as I said drift is very important both systematic and random errors are very cr crucial for our designs. In this course I'm, I should not keep saying word design because I teach a course on analog VLSI design so I keep that word in my mind. In this course we are not really not going to design things. we are actually going to do analysis how to design and not really design. Uh, future in case you happen to come for masters course here or elsewhere you, you can take that op option course VLSI analog and there we will actually design that 
how a chip is made and what sizing and how we do that. Okay. But here I think we are doing more analysis. The problem with uh, most silicon chips are that uh, in digital circuit what we do is well, let us say I want to make a microprocessor. So, what I do is most companies uh, may have or at least the I may actually have blocks which are pre designed, pre fabricated, uh, pre tested memory blocks, register blocks, ALU blocks, these are called standard cells. The new name for all this is IPs, intellectual property. So, each can be designed and hold and no, you will not tell you, you pay me I will give you kind of thing. Okay. So, these IPs are not available in analog because analog is so much varying things for you will have to create huge number of IPs, millions of them just to keep and maybe one out of that will be used. Okay. So, it is impossible to actually create IPs in analogs. So, every chip or every system has to be designed okay. and that is why there is nothing shortcuts in analog and that is why you have to learn analog seriously because every case is different from the last one. Then there is a problem in all digital people are looking for 0.8 volt power supply, battery 1.1 volt say people want to reduce power, mobile there is a 1.1 volt battery. Now, they want to reduce to 0.8, maybe 0.6 later because power dissipation is very crucial for us. So, what we are saying that if you do good for digital, which is very good if you digital may still work on 0.6 or 0.8, but that is against the whole grain of goodness for analog. But since you will always, as I said earlier, digital will analog will be part of digital, you will work on a bad uh, tools and say, oh, design a great car. But tools are you know age old ambassador card ka sub uh, tooling hai mere paas, but you want a Toyota or Corolla to come out. So, it is very difficult, but that is what the whole challenge is about. Uh, therefore, analog circuits though we want, but not very low power, but there is an effort and that is the challenge that how do you reduce the power in even in analog, which is otherwise very difficult to get a good performance. Okay. So, these are the issues when we design a chip. Though these are not relevant for circuit analysis, but just to give you where we are. So, that is the aim we are looking at. Okay. What do I think maybe my English is not correct in that. What I say is that you should be able to reject much of the noise. Okay. So, that the signal gets amplified, okay. but noise does not as much. Okay. We will give you some example that if I want to have a two stage amplifier or three stage amplifier. And if I pass through this, the device itself will add to a noise it from its own. There is an input noise going on. Now, these two noises are now input to the next amplifier. Okay. So, it should be tolerant, less tolerant because it should stop that noise to go ahead. This is what I meant if I am not clear in that, that is what. Is that clear? That's what. So, I repeat uh, the three parameters in our uh, analogs are GM which is transconductance, output resistance which is very important for us and the noise which we as I say we define as input referred. Uh, this is very interesting word input referred, noise is seen at the output is that clear and we say no, but we you must specify at the input okay, what is possible. So, there is something word will change from output to input and we will say it is input referred. And then the finally and the most important parameter in our design or in our circuits is the bandwidth. How much frequency response that is let us say I am an amplifier and I want to design an amplifier which will amplify the signal even if the signal frequency goes to say gigahertz. Okay. But this statement is very cheap or simple oh why what is big about having an amplifier which can amplify up to a gigahertz. No most amplifiers will not go beyond few mega hundreds of megahertz. There a lot of effort has to be done if I had to amplify at gigahertz. Okay. So, this is called frequency response okay. and associated which I did not say it very specifically and last time I did say something about it. There is a gain bandwidth as the product which is relevant to us. So, if we increase bandwidth yeah, your gain will go down. So, at gigahertz you may have a unity gain one, one, one gain that means no gain kind of or even less than one. Okay. So, not the only solution because gain has to be remained at something I want gain of 20, 100, 200 and that gain I must attain. Okay. Otherwise why amplify if the gain is not there this is in life as well if I 
output some two hours here, I must get a good grade, you know, some output has to be good. Okay. So, this also is an issue which is interrelated. So, GM has something to do with bandwidth, GM has something to do with the gain. So, we must now look at if I increase GM, what do will happen? But if I increase GM, what else will happen which may not allow me to increase the bandwidth or vice versa? That is the crucial analysis we like to do. Uh, there are different kinds of noises in the system. One is called thermal noise, another is called one upon f noise. Uh, we may not look into details, but just to give a figure which I do not know whether you can see from here. The this is log uh, noise plotted, it is called noise voltage versus frequency. Do you see here somewhere? So, initially at low frequencies, one upon f noise dominant. Is that clear to you? The figure 1 upon f noise, and as the frequency increases, it is the thermal noise which takes over. Thermal noise is essentially because of random motion of electrons and other things in the matter, atom, okay, atomic system. So, uh, yeah, there is a possibility that some may dominate somewhere, some may. So, this Fc cutoff may be higher or lower in different devices, different systems. So, there is an issue how to control noise and all analog circuits are worried about this noise ok. Uh, at the end of the day of course, do just forget that it is the transconductance uh, which if you change will correspondingly change the noise itself because the expression shows noise square is proportional to gm square. Is that clear now? So, if I increase gm for gain and bandwidth some way my noise is also increasing. Is that issue now clear that my noise is what I am worried about ok. As I said this may not be the major issue for you this course, but just to get an idea that we are worried about noise in all of our designs it has to be clear. This is the word called input referred noise. V n i n square or noise is always expressed as squares ok square voltage because it is some way related to power and therefore, it is always expressed in voltages. So, V n i n square is equal to V n out square divided by gain square. This is called input referred noise. The reason why we always refer if you see the expression we need not know anything. These are all controllable input parameters and therefore, what is the noise essentially will come will be decided from the transistors and the inputs uh, what you are connecting to. And therefore, we always refer noises to the input side by dividing this kind of A v square terms. Ok, uh, just to for design something we need to work on higher VDD if possible ok or what we call bias current should be stabilized. We should also look for of course, the words are we will come back these are very important word in our analog PM what does this PM mean? So, PM is called phase margins ok. So, in analog circuit you can think of phase margin not a great thing. If you have a signal V is equal to V0 or Va e to the power something okay, or sin omega t plus theta or plus phi or whatever it is and if the signal goes through the system this phi changes to something else. So, let us say phi 2 then the margin on phase margin is phi 2 minus phi 1 because the phase has changed now is that clear it is called phase margin. So, it is very important for us because phase margin means something has now changed not only in the frequency, but also in the phase shifts have come ok and therefore, very crucial in our designs ok. And they are somewhere related to what we call and we will look into these transfer functions. Uh, you have not done control course so far I, I think so ok. So, maybe I will introduce to you what is pole and 0. If you have done that course then I would say are pole 0 aapne pada hai. So, this pole 0 we will come to expressions and you will know what I am talking. They may decide whether system will remain stable. So, what do you mean by stable? That if I change the frequency or signal strength, the gain should be proportional. Otherwise, if it changes, then I have worries, ok. And that is called stability of the system. In simple term, one may say I am designing an amplifier, and if it starts oscillating, that means it becomes an oscillator, it is an unstable system. And this is very simple you can see from your 
future when we do that when I design a good oscillator it actually damps down and becomes some kind of a damping system it gives you gain and reduce gain to 0 also ok. So when you are trying to get a good oscillator that self sustain it does not sustain. When I am making an amplifier it does not really start oscillating. So I want a constant gain constant signal and it is changing now ok. So that is a design issue that when I am designing an amplifier it should not oscillate and when I am designing an oscillator it should not damp ok. It should not amplify huge and then damp down ok. So these are the two complementary or contradictory terms which is word goes into word stable stability ok. If it is an amplifier it should remain amplifier if it is an oscillator it should remain oscillator. To do this we say constant gm kind of circuits is better there are many methods we will see if time permitting. Then the other issues are offsets as I already said the drifts can occur and how to take care of offsets ok. The another issue which I thought you should know which may not be directly related to our course but for this lecture I may tell you uh, there is a another analog or the analog cum digital system which is becoming most important as far as the money part in the silicon industry is concerned which is called RF signals. Why it is called money spinner? Because all of you barring exception you may be holding a mobile, may be holding more than one mobile. If I give you 2G now you want 3G, if I, when we 3G networking start you will have 4G ok. You want everything on your mobile now. Mobile works at different ways one is called GSM, the other is CDMA, you will see that in your communication course this latter. So either of this system which you are doing you have a frequency range which is around 890 megahertz and above to few gigahertz. These ranges are called radio frequencies and uh, since signals your voice is still analog much of the inputs you will create are analog these chips are called or systems are called mixed signal. There will be analog blocks and there will be digital. So the RF which we are now creating which is what we are really looking for nowadays this is something like a typical mobile system I can have a look at it ok. This is my antenna this upper part is receiver the lower part is transmitter ok. So uh, we start with first part which you see is a low noise amplifier this is analog low noise amplifier why it is low noise? because the signal which we received from antenna is very very weak. Last time I said the strength depends on how far you are away from the tower ok and many a times it is called fade out you will not even have the signal ok. This is why you need to boost and that is the first amplifier which we put is amplifier low noise amplifier. The interest part in this is uh, because it is an amplifier it will have a bandwidth issues which we will see later there will be a filter has to be created which will reject the frequencies which are not required from the signal this is called image reject filters this is also analog block. You may need another amplification at the after rejection of those frequencies because initial gains will be smaller but the next gains will be higher okay. and these pro programmable gain means their gains can be modified. Then we put another image reject filter because you have a bandwidth issue created in LNA and then we go to what we call mixers which are partially analog partially digital ok. And uh, then we put a filter then you have another IF amplifier this is called in image uh, we have created intermediate frequencies after mixer let us say we have gigahertz we may go to few megahertz hundreds of megahertz 200 of megahertz and we may sometimes they may have more than one mixer to get a lower frequency which is called base band ok 20 megahertz or something like that. Then you may have this is what I have shown you here this is another mixer another filter and your base bands this is called receiver part ok. Beyond this base band once I receive I will convert to digital and further processing everything will be on DSP ok and at the end if you really want to see some displays or something you may convert that digital data output to analog or the DTA. So two more blocks which I have not shown is A to D converters and finally 
D2A converters, but basic processing major will be done in D2. So, a trans receiver, this is called trans receiver, why trans receiver is why transmitter and receiver together. If you are transmitting your baselines are here, this is called orthogonal system shown here baseband 1 and baseband 2, okay. Uh, two mixers then you mix to a adder which is also analog adder, filter, IF control, single sideband mixer. These are two major amplifiers which are again power amplifiers and a buffer which are essentially analog blocks. The power amplifier must have sufficient power so that from the antenna I can transmit for a longer length. Okay. So, this is a typical cellophone structure, is that clear? We may be not interested beyond baseband in this course because we are not looking for digital part, we are looking only for analog part. So, we are, so one can see all that time what I am talking about in analog, I am looking for amplifier, mixers may be one. For mixer, you actually require a frequency source which is called written frequency synthesizer or also called voltage controlled oscillators. Now, this VCO is an analog block which is given to a mixer. So, you have how much what you are going to do actually in analog and amplifier different kinds, different bandwidths, different noises. You need oscillators okay for different frequencies, synthesize means different frequencies can be created. Okay. You need filters, okay. low pass, high pass, band pass, band reject, all kinds of filters okay. These are essential blocks in analog, no more, no less. What is ISDN? Anyone heard? Okay. S stand for what? D stand for? D is of course digital. N is network. Okay. Integrated services digital network is ISDN, which is our BSNL or MTNL allows you to have all four. That is data transmission, video transmission, computer connection, and TV. All can be trans fax. All can be or even earlier telex as we used to call all services can be given on a single line by switches is called ISDN. This is a network uh, kind of circuits which ISDN will provide for you. So, again you can see there will be D2A converters, pulse generator, filters, line drivers, balancers, pre-filters, then tone detectors. All these are basically analog blocks partly converted from D2A digital to analog and now you do processing on analog part. So, this is very, is it ISDN is replaced already by what? Cable modem, cable itself can do all the jobs, wireless can do all the job, LANs are come, WLANs, okay. Wi-Fi, WiMAX. But what is the problem with uh, IS, what was the good thing in ISDN? Because it was on your telephone line, which in old days, will not believe it, your parents may tell to get a telephone in Mumbai in as late as 80s was a nightmare okay. to register and after 8 months, 1 year, 2 years depends on if you know someone or you do not, you may get your line. So, getting an ISDN was for an institute was an achievement. In 80s when IIT Bombay got ISDN, a director was, was thanked. So, that is what essentially. Now, we have changed so much you do not realize but there was a time when we actually worked on such poor systems, okay. okay. Uh, these are essentially uh, circuits which are called frequency modulated transmitters and receivers and you can see there are, this is shown intentionally bipolar because these are old circuits, you require inductances, capacitances, resistances, transistors and different transistor sizes. Uh, all this and of course, you can have a loudspeaker, you can have a microphone. And uh, this was our old system, but basic even now has not changed because uh, you cannot change the basic operation of an amplifier or an anything. So, even if we are done much more work to simplify it or reduce the components, the basic idea of analog circuit design is still same as 50 years ago we were doing it. Like mobile, WLAN, GPS are examples of RF, the trade off in R. Why RF design I am showing you for your sake? 
in the case of digital i did not show you very much but i showed you that there is a uh, there is a triangle of design or what we call trade offs what are the three things last time i showed you i said i don't know whether i have shown that figure if not i will again show you this is let's say power this is speed this is how we call area of the chip okay what on this area so if i want to reduce power then i'll reduce speed but i may actually increase or if i want same speed then i may increase the area so triangle has to be pulled up or pulled down but the wall net area will remain same in the technology so you cannot achieve all goodness because of the triangle limitation but if you see rf this is the problem how many things we controlled there three and how many now i am controlling almost hexagon six of them maybe a better figure can be here uh you have a linearity you have power supply value you have gain you have frequency that is the bandwidth your power and your noise and now you control one the other is going to be affected so when i start designing an analog block i am worried of a particular rf uh, they say okay this is 0.8 volt mobile cannot get more than that supply oh that means now i have reduced this i don't have enough currents oh so how much gain i can get if i reduce increase gain by size i may lower in frequency because capacitance are increased no no i want okay then i must push power that means i must increase currents if i increase current i will increase noise so i have to keep worrying now that how do i optimize most of it okay but you cannot achieve all of it is that clear to you why why this limits have been shown that don't tell me that zero volt infinite gain infinite frequency 100% linear zero noise zero power is achieved this is not done if you want something from me you must give me something okay that's the world that's how world works is hat le us hat de okay system is similar so in our designs that's what the designer's job is to optimize the best of it and say okay this is not achievable but this i can give so you cannot have everything but okay if this is your more important parameters okay i'll control them but they at the cost of other three or four So someone has to optimize this design. That is why engineers are required. Is that clear? Why? What is the issue? I am raising all this. I am trying to tell you that automation is always possible in digital many ways because there are fewer parameters to control. In analog RF designs, there are too many to control, and manual intervention is essential because every person will come with some other requirement, and you say, "Oh my God! Now how do I achieve this?" so your design approach or your analysis approach should be very good because you have to meet someone's specs which will be different from your next circuit that is why the analog circuit essentially is slightly uh, difficult some may say but more interesting because otherwise there is no this is required you know we keep saying digital people that you don't need this you do it automation you give something it will give you fine at the end of the day computer scientists make as good a chip as electrical engineers okay why because there is so much software available you can take download many things and start designing and chip may work as well okay because someone has already standardized that and can be used there analog there is nothing something every minute i need myself to see what going on okay therefore please remember that why analog rf designs are important or difficult is because of its requirements the major problem which i said you is in wireless application which are the major applications why is a major aap sab log jitne mobile use karenge utna vlsi or silicon community aapko thank degi parents na dein they may not like that but as a vlsi engineer say oh thank god use two of them two ipod bhi karo ipad bhi karo ye bhi karo utna paisa so industry is actually working on wireless systems now okay which is more money spinner than anything so we have the other systems like bluetooth wlan set top box you must have seen nowadays almost everyone you have direct tv home dth this is essentially you have a box there which actually picks up a frequency of your choice and does the set up box set top box okay why it was called top it is put on something set top box 
uh, then there is intermediate frequency and baseband part of radios. There is a radio which has come, which is called software radio. Think of it, what I said, okay. software radio. Okay. It's something different. Nothing to do with radio per se. That is the radio receiver, but the word is software radio. Okay. Uh, there are many challenges in mixed signal. Uh, and why STMOS? Why did I say last time? Because that's the technology digital people will force on you. Whether I like or I don't like is not my choice of analog. Analog say, are baba, bipolar go. But that does not work. They say, this is the technology. Nowadays, what is the kind of technology we are working on CMOS for digital chips? 28 nanometer, that is the channel length is of the order of 28 nanometers. I started working in 70s when we worked on 50 micron channel length device. In my 35, 40 years of time, now the devices have reached channel lengths of 28 nanometers, 28 Armstrongs, okay. and sooner we may actually reach 11 nanometers in few years. First we go for 16, and then maybe we 22, 16, and finally to 11. And if uh, things go all well, zero. Okay. Okay. So that's the technology. But analog people will see later longer the channel length he is very happy <laughs> he said thanks okay my gains are good my bandwidths are good okay but digital say oh but 28 nanometers that's what intel has come with all new microprocessors are 28 nanometers so the problem he got the point the problem is bad tools for us good for digital but then you work for those for this technology that's why it's called mixed signal design it's tougher then pure analog, why? Because pure analog, I may use bipolar, why use MOS? I have better choice. Okay. But if I had to work in the, the money making chips, which is wireless as of now, for example, then I have to go for what digital people will say and that is what we are doing right now. Preparing the device, there are many other problems like short channel effects, there is a problem of breakdown problems, there is a non-linearity problems, there is a couple noise problems. There is a huge flicker noise adding now. Okay. Okay. So, point I am trying to say that there is uh, what is this NQS in device course? Anytime you heard the word in the devices, if I apply something, the response time. You know, for example, if I change bias. The device does not respond instantaneously, you, know, you just change the bias externally, internally it takes time, you know, there is some issues going on. Okay. But in system what do you want? We want a quasi, we want a steady state. So we may not get a real steady state, we get a steady state which we call quasi steady state. But in very low uh, low channel circuits or low channel devices, this it's a, even quasi static, uh, st quasi steady state is not possible, non steady, quasi static. Now, how to model something like this which is non quasi static? This is a major issue in modeling in the case of sub sub, hundred, uh, sub 30 nanometer devices to get quasi quasi we model. We say, okay, thode der ke liye to steady state hai, aisa man lete Ab ye wo bhi nahi hai. So, what do you do? Okay, that is the issue. At RF frequencies, steady state is not possible. All over, do you solve the continuity equation? You say steady state. Udar se aya, udar se nikla. Steady. Now, if I do not apply uh, continuity equation for device, how do I get the relationship between currents and the fields? A Poisson's equation cannot be because I cannot get now doping exactly, so I cannot put in field, field equation. So, quasi steady state was assumed in most devices, but when I go to a lower channel devices, this is modeled. So, this course has nothing to do with it. I just want to tell you why we are worried because they are telling means I am now talking myself analog man when I sit on digital I tell those otherwise people. So digital people forcing us to think much more now because they are moving in one direction which we do not want to go but we will have to go kind of thing. Okay. Uh, this is what I said digital design is getting so much computer added design tools so their designs are not very difficult. Analog circuit still remains a handcrafted art and that is what the word I use say every year, it is a art. So, it is called art of electronics, okay. it is not art of designing, it is an art of, it is an artist, it is not even science. So, all cannot become a good analog designer. So, 
So, you know, all cannot become artists. I may actually paint by putting some brush here, there, but it does not make sense. But normally, usually, what we understand painting. Uh, so, it is a crafted art. How good you are, analog designer, is individual, and that much how much depth internally you create for yourself. Uh, a larger percent of diarrhea, analog, if it is much easier if larger area is given, but they will give very small area to that is an issue probably. 100 percent area may 5 percent analog. So, that is you know, worrying us in every way. Okay. Then the design time it takes very high because it individual blocks have to be designed, so it takes time. Time means what? Money. So many design engineers will be working, so much man years, so much money. So, analog designs normally being smaller even then they take larger design time because they need to meet very stringent specs. Okay, cost of mixed signal chips, analog part cost approximately two and a half times. That's what. They, let's say in a 0.18 micron as did in 0.35, because it does not shrink as digital. Everything you know, like scale, they say 0.5 half kya 0.2, half kya 0.1. Nothing happens in analog like that. Okay, so that cost never reduces. It actually increases if you go further. You know. So, it is worrying that that analog blocks are costlier than digital blocks as you are shrinking, okay, because you will require more effort now to design them. Is that okay? The another problem in mixed signal is since you have both digital analog on the same silicon, they are connected internally in the substrate. So, what is good may be good, but what is not, it may actually create problem for the other, okay, particularly digital switches. Do you understand what is digital? 1010 at higher the frequency it will do even faster. That change will apply to the bias at the substrate that will become signal to analog as a noise. Okay. So, this inbuilt noise creation from the digital is constantly through substrate going to analog and he is worried of yeah, isko kya that is why I say why I say analog particularly in the present era is becoming difficult is this. Okay, just more interesting figures. Uh, nothing great now on theory. Uh, this is a very standard broadband network. Okay, you start with a packet network infrastructure gateways. Uh, maybe we'll show you. This is your prime access gateway, which is connected to so many applications: camera, pad, iPad. Uh, then this is your mobile. This is your desktop. This is your TV. This is your fax machines and telephones. And this is your laptops. So everything is connectable through a broadband. Okay. So, then you will see figures. Okay. So, that is the lifestyle you all want to be. You want to sit in your house, work somewhere else and you want to do everything almost uh, by click of your tick should happen. Okay. This is possible. Okay. This is possible. That is what you all want and this may happen soon. Or most people are already working on it in many countries. Like for example, uh, in uh, many European countries or in US, uh, even in India now, uh, your pressure cooker or what is called electric cooker, uh, you know the person can switch on at a given time and after some time switches off. Washing machine may start after some time and switches off kind of thing. Sitting at the fag end, I mean you are working okay. or let us say you are ladies who work also nowadays 50 percent of the VLSI industry is man, manned by uh, the other sex very good 50 percent is a large number 33 percent they were asking now they are already 50 percent okay, in most silicon industries. Okay. Uh, this is a cable network uh, what is cable network all of you those who are does not have this uh, uh, Z or big TV uh, DTH home still may have a cable coming from your cable operator okay, which is 4 gigahertz cable line which is hanging around the road, hanging around everywhere finally reaching your home. Even that can be connected through that you can actually do most of the connections now. Okay. You look at the video where both analog digitals are required a camera, cellular, video DMA. What is DMA? Network camera, IP video, 
DVDs, D1 DNA, IPS TVs, media, video surveillance, video on demand, broadcasting, everything right now what you see as both analog and digital come. This is the fiber links. Okay. Uh, we are looking for bandwidths of the uh, typically around 100 gigabits per second, okay, uh, which is shown at 64 OC 48 circuits. And uh, we may go for multi fiber, multi mode, and may increase further the transmissions. Our ultimate aim that repeater should not go beyond before 100 kilometers is what we are looking for. Right now, every 3.5 kilometer there is a repeater for optical fiber okay. some new fiber lines have up to 10 kilometers but most have 3.5 kilometers earlier it used to be 1 kilometer what is the problem if it breaks we will have to remove that link splice it reshield it put another uh, transfer receive there okay. so that is the issue now we are increasing that to uh, 10 kilometers that is what we are looking for uh, yeah, broadband is going to grow fueled by consumer demand, broadband access is evolving high speeds because you want an internet, very high speed internet that is why broadband is being pushed very heavily. Okay, we will move this is something else. There are three problems in integrated circuits. The first problem is power, we want to reduce it, the second is interconnect. How much length I said in Pentium four, uh, first Pentium 1? 1 kilometers and the present Pentium or Gileon which has come has 3.6 kilometer length of internet. So on a smaller chip up 2 centimeter by 2 centimeter. Do you get the point? It is a perimeter. How many times you go like this? That is the length. The length of the chip is no more than 2 centimeters. Okay. So do not think that 2 centimeter may kilometer. Okay. So that is our major worry. Because if something is going that far, my signal will attenuate by the time it reaches few things, few meters. Okay. Because so much capacitance on the line, it will just RC time constant. Khatam. So, usko boost karna padega. Boost kiya, to phase phase margin aega. Phase margin aega, to ek clock ya ek signal, dusre clock, dusre clock mein mein phase mein nahi. So, usko phaser lagana padega. So, there are issues which are called interconnect issues. Uh, then of course complexity, number of devices, transistors are reaching millions, 42 million transistors in Pentium 4, uh, sorry uh, Pentium 4 first one, uh, Pentium 1. Now we are going for 800 million transistors, Pentium normally 4 which is 142 million, the present circuits can go up to 850 million transistors, okay. is that clear? So that is the complexity we are handling. Power crisis, the major worry in power has come because of the devices becoming smaller. There is something what we call leakage problems. Now, in earlier times, this word never came to our mind, okay, off current. Off current means when I, my, for a digital for example, when the input is 0 or lower level, no current passes in the circuit we say, that is what a switched off we say. But we assumed that time that the on current when it is turned on is much larger compared to off currents. Okay. 1 milliamp and this may be nano amp. Okay. But if that 1 milliamp has become now hundreds of or tens of microamps and this has increased from few nano amps to tens of nano, we are closer by. Okay. Even if 50 percent of the circuit is off and there are 100 million transistors let us say 50 million inverters on that, half of them are off, 25 million into this off current is not a small power which you thought earlier 0. Okay. Since the complexity has increased, the off current itself has increased and on current has not increased very much, in fact it has decreased because of power requirement. So now this is a major issue, circuits start failing because of the off current. The joke is if you work on 28 nanometers, 66 percent of the power is off power and 33 percent or 34 percent is on power. That means if you keep your mobile on, it will consume 34 percent of the power. If you put it in standby, 
it will actually drain your battery more. That is why I do not discourage you constantly talking on mobile because at least net energy of the world is saved because battery is not getting drained. Okay, is that clear? Okay. Okay. Uh, as I say, number of interconnects are increased enormously. Okay. There is a noise issue. There is another issue has come. Two trans, two interconnect lines. Interconnect sitting, interconnect with a metal layer, metal sitting on some insulator, that is how interconnect runs. But this is met like an RC circuit, which means like a transmission line. Okay. Now, when the two transmission lines come closer, they have a capacitance in between as shown here. These are two metal lines, three metal lines. As they come closer, epsilon A by D, D is smaller, a couple. So, signal passing in one line may actually get coupled to either side, okay. This is called crosstalk as I said last time, okay. So, if you shrink, reduce everything closer, 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 this will kill you, okay. So, interconnect issues are very, very interesting because they pick up too much noise in all, all this work, okay. And finally, as I say, the number of transistors are increasing, number of kinds of circuits we are increasing, the board has becoming very big and to maintain their connectivity proper is becoming a very important. To design such a large system is very difficult. So, we design blocks and try to put on a one common platform which is called system on chip. Okay. This is the current trend system on chip okay, SOC. There is also another game being tried by Japan and some other company which is called system inside package SIP. Okay. That means you have number of chips put inside one package, it is called system in package. Okay. Uh, this particular has 28 chips, Sony camcorder has this chip which has a DSP memory many things, there are 4 layers, 7 chips on per layer, 28 chips package one single package. Okay. This is called system in, in package or system inside a package, whereas the other one is like a, which we call system on chip or SOC where each block is given an area where they are mounted on a single wafer or single area, it is called system on chip. Okay. These are possible mechanism which we may work future, it may actually get analog, it may get digital, it may get MEMS, it may get all kinds of circuits can be separately connected properly so that you may design a large system. So this is what at the end we are looking for your times. Uh, this is 2014, we are going to work on 3.6G, uh, we will require for strong control on VTH, we are working for 35 nanometer, already we are crossed, okay, forget that number now. Uh, 17 gigahertz clock we want to run, how much clock we are running in our microprocessor which we use PC, 3.4 gigahertz, we are looking for 17 gigahertz chips now, okay this will be the greatest thing to happen soon. Okay. This is what the world is looking into, 10 meter wide road, designing a map of 10 meter wide road for a world at last is what essentially VLSI design is. I okay. will uh, just give you the last few slides. Uh, I do not know because many of you were not even born okay, in 70s. There used to be a uh, famous uh, LA, in LA there used to be a famous uh, serial uh, based on some secret agent called Dick Tracy. Okay. Uh, the, the, this name was Columbus actually and uh, he used to have, of course you are, if you are even at your age you could have seen some of the not not seven bond films, you know he makes lot of tricks on those, they were only for fi film those days. All that what was they were showing then, like he has a camera, he has a music, everything on his watch. In 1976 serial they showed this, okay, Dick Tracy. In 1998 or 97, uh, Sony came out with a watch, which this not only what Dick Tracy was showing in 70s, but that much more than what Dick Tracy could do, okay. That is the progress integrated circuits are done. Okay. Similar thing came from Samsung which has a similar watch which has a camera which has a 
mobile which has of course watch has watch is also there okay, many other things ye kyon joke kiya matlab of course we are also you know many times we are invited for tea in the evening by some family and other than tea everything is served you know so isliye bola watch bhi hai uske for silicon people uh, this is very important these are actually a silicon wafer with this each is a chip now it is at the horizon okay now if uh, this gentleman is a optimist he will say like a sun this is coming out till the full blown has to come okay but let's not put name someone maybe x y of you are pessimist oh it's now shrinking you know it's go down until now finish it depends on what you are and what you want to think silicon is going to stand till 1950 come what me okay. thank you your half the career will be made on that if you join silicon okay. this is what all of us wish uh, jairam ramesh wants us to do like this uh, by the way jairam ramesh is distinguished alumni of this institute okay. Uh, from the civil engineering department i don't know how civil is connected to environment but maybe public health is one of the part of civil uh this is called nomadic society uh, nomads move from one place to the other and they don't stick to a place okay so if you, in a modern era this is possible you can have all kinds of a small laptop or some kind of a which has every control what you want you can live in a jungle or you can live anywhere your office may be far away in a distant city of 3000 miles or whatever distance you see from good environment around nature everything and you are still working for that company or your home or anything this is what is possible in a very near future okay. finally before we quit on this uh this is for those who don't want to remain engineers this is my advice executives might make the final decisions all managers do that about what would be produced but engineers would provide most of the ideas for new products managers don't get ideas they only manage okay. but engineers get ideas okay. after all engineers were the people who really knew the state of the art and who were therefore best equipped for prophecy changes in this technology so if you really want to remain in best of your minds continue to remain engineers one of my 84 graduate uh, then of course did masters also in computer science not with our department mahesh mendre dr mahesh mendre he is the director of texas instrument bangalore and uh, he is the only texas instrument fellow in whole asia ti allows any academic excellence which has contributed to ti's progress a honor which is academic honor called fellow okay so he has he is the only asian fellow ti has a work in japan korea china singapore even in uh, country like sri lanka they have small uh, this iran iraq of course now they are close most of it okay turkey of course turkey may not like to be called asian but Turkey, all these countries in Russia. So all these countries only fellow is my student, management. Why? Because he chose not to become manager, but start, still start continue to work for the progress of science in TI. He has has some sixty five patents, and three of his patents have got the best awards. Okay. And therefore, he is called director of technology. and he he doesn't report to the md of the company he he starts his own projects and of course approvals are required in dallas but he doesn't have to report to anyone okay. that's his strength so if you really want to remain in engineering discipline you have a good example from itb you can still reach the best and still remain as active in academics as you wish to be uh many of the ppt shown to you are taken from sony corporation's ppt given to me by sony's vice president 
many of the there is a standard book by Professor Radhavi on analog circuit Bhagavan. Uh, there is a EDA company called Cadence. So some of the slides have been done. Actually, in India, there is not a single VLSI company which does not have IITB students, both graduates, dual degree as well as postgraduates. And uh, since I been here too long, most of them by force studied like you have been forced to study with me. Uh, they had to study go through me and if they are doing analog VLS or digital VLS, they have must have done my course. So I say I control Bangalore and Hyderabad. Okay. So most companies you see these students come here sometimes give lectures, sometimes give so this is latest. That is why I get the latest PPTs because of courtesies of people like you who some of you still want to remember me. Okay. Uh, there are many websites on VLS available on net. Uh, there is a book on digital circuit by Rebe, which is very good book for digital. So that is one from there, of course. And finally, thank you for this. So let us, this is, I hope that we will just introduce few things and then stop. Uh, by now, you must have understood why I showed you all this for two days. And I wanted to make a distinction for to you that, uh, you know, all other jobs are as good at the end of the day you want to be happy, uh, maybe good prosperous happiness okay, and everything. You want three cars, four cars, everything is fine. But the job satisfaction is the first thing you must look for because at the end of the day if you are very un unhappy on your job, nothing will be as good as you think. You may provide everything to your family but you still will not be happy. So at the end of the day, if you are happy with the banking, doling money here, they are writing a report, fair enough, nothing absurd or nothing wrong. But all need not do that job, okay. Some should do engineering and be happy if you are learned. And if you want to do good and be happy, learn what engineering is all about. That is why we are actually showing you what is in future, what was in past and what is going on, okay. So that you can correlate yourself where you can probably fit or maybe unfit. As I say, we will uh, uh, for next 10 minutes, we will quickly go through some of the issues of analog again. Uh, analog circuits can be implemented in two technologies as I said, one of course is uh, bipolar, the other is MOS. Okay. Uh, as I said earlier also, bipolar technologies are not out, there are many chips still in bipolar available in market and therefore one cannot say one should not learn. Secondly, why I still want to do bipolars because it is called pedagogy, that is how we started. Mere mein MOSFET nahi tha. So, I learned vacuum tubes, you know, I did not have any transistors. You probably do not know what is vacuum tube, maybe you look at the web. Yeah, huge 6 to 8 inch kind of glass tubes inside, grid, plate, cathode, you know, like at CRT, we used to have tubes, 300 volt supply, DC, okay. that is how we were learned electronics. Things have changed. So bipolar is still not out, 741 many of the OPAMs are still on bipolars. However, major technology as I said is MOS, so we will concentrate also on MOS designs because that is what is now going on. Okay. Uh, both certainly have some advantages and some disadvantages and uh, depends on the system requirement, one may choose to go on fully bipolar or fully MOS. Because the most uh, systems in marketed are mixed signal, they are mostly on MOS. So we will like to see what happens if analog is put on a digital technology. Okay. That is why the worries are. Okay. Otherwise, I don't see any worry. Okay. Let's look. You have done last semester a course. Uh, if not, please revise your course because uh, I'll not teach devices course in analog. Okay. Uh, the basic transistor shown here is an NPN transistor, can be a PNP as well. The symbol is arrow coming out is NPN, arrow going at the emitter is PNPN, PNP. Typical NPN transistor is shown here. Uh, this is emitter which is heavily doped N plus, sometime N plus plus, then small base width shallow doped or low doped P region which is the base connected and a little lesser doped than N plus is the collector region 
and this is the symbol of currents we have shown I V enters, I enters, so is I C enters. Okay, this is the symbol. In real life, these symbols have no meaning. Why? Because current can start or the base, uh, the circuit wise, the current can be shown only starting from positive terminal of the battery and should end at the negative terminal. That is what the circuit is worried about. So, irrespective of what happens inside or whatever you may say for the device, actually currents will start from power supply and will go to the ground. That is the way it will happen. Now, you may have to say no, but you are showing this symbol and the actual current is this. Yeah, that may be electron current going down, but the actual current is going up. Is that clear? So, symbol in devices and symbol in circuit may sometimes vary because of the carrier which you are going to use in different devices. This is a symbolization, but do not worry, this is for device. In real life, please remember circuit always will start current from positive terminal of the battery and will end at the negative to form a circuit. Unless it returns, no circuit, and unless it circuit is formed, no analysis, no current. Okay. So, there is a universal thinking in bipolar as you must have learned that the emitted current is always sum of base current and the collector current. Essentially what we say when the emitter electrons, emitter injects electrons, part of the electrons are recombining in base, okay, constituting the base current and the rest will go to the collector. Okay. However, in this there are some leakage currents we are not added, but that may happen because there are two diodes they may cancel. So, basic idea in case of uh, circuit, please take it these are circuit, we may in reality devices small changes may occur, but in circuits emitter current is always sum of base current plus collector current, this is our universal theory. Okay. We also know the collector current as I just now said, not all electrons starting from emitter reach collector, there is a transport essentially because of recombination, because of the efficiency of this emitter junction and the base transport it does. There is a term which is called alpha T is base transport factor and emitter cannot have 100 percent efficiency. So, it has emitter efficiency gamma and the product is called alpha okay. and I C is equal to alpha times I. Please take it these are circuit equations. Some modifications will be done in real life in case we need leakage currents to be added, but normally this will be followed in most circuit cases. We also know that the collector current divided by uh, base emitter current is alpha, but collector current from this equation now use I is equal to IB plus IC in this equation and then you will get IC by IB is equal to beta which essentially from this term will come alpha upon 1 minus alpha and beta is essentially called common emitter forward current gain okay, is the major parameter in all our analog circuits beta. How much is the beta? Why? Because typically the inputs will be given at the base and how much beta times it will provide you the collector current. So, larger the beta, larger will be the gain and therefore, it is called gain. Okay. Typically, gains can be as low as 2, 3, 4 or 5 and can go up to 500 to 600. Okay. This is possible. Why 500 to 600? You cannot become alpha is equal to 1, beta is infinite actually, but alpha can never become 1 because alpha t cannot recover. There is there will be time, there is a finite time or recombination time in the base and there is not all electrons there will be reverse current also coming from base to the emitter. So, all gamma can never become 1. Since gamma can never become 1, alpha t can never become 1, alpha can never become 1. So, beta cannot be infinite guarantee, alpha will never become 1. So, as high alpha you can get 0 0.999 that may give you 1000 beta, okay. is that correct? So, maximum possible alpha you can get in most technology of device may be of that order which means not more than 600, 500 beta can be achieved. Is that correct? This is technology limits. If you can do better someday, yes you can improve, but that is very difficult. I am not saying impossible. We also say if you want little more accuracy, IC is not only alpha IE plus some 
collector leakage current which is called when the emitter is open uh, sorry collector is open whatever is the collector sorry base emitter junction is open whatever is the collector current you get is called ico okay and we like uh, devices you please read if you have no if you do, some of you don't know or not understood you can me separately out i'll explain the devices much more uh, detail if you wish to okay so i right now assume that in this is what i can use in most circuit but if i want little more thinking i may add a term ICO to that. Okay. ICO, of course, is decided by ICS, which is reverse saturation current of collector junction into one minus alpha R into alpha R. What is alpha R? Alpha F is that is collector acting like emitter and emitter acting like a collector is called reverse operation. So alpha is the reverse operated alpha of that. So IC by IE. opposite way if you do it it is called alpha r that is emitter becoming collector and collector becoming emitter. essentially what saying in normal operation base emitter junction is forward biased and base collector junction is reverse biased if you do the contrary base emitter junction reverse biased and base collector is forward biased the carriers will come from the other side okay and that is called alpha r so it can be proved by device theory that ico is reverse saturation current ics Into one minus alpha r, alpha r, and that you can evaluate I C O. By measurement, you can do easily. Just open that circuit and measure the current in the actual circuit. That's the I C O. Okay. We also have one Kirchhoff law always followed. B C E is uh, if you see this uh, B C E, and this is your B D E, and this is your B D C. you can see from here at between the two nodes you can have only one voltage between any two nodes you can have only one voltage between this collector junction and emitter junction if you have a voltage vce but if you go through the other side of the loop you go from emitter to base and base to collector then the sum total of base emitter voltage plus base collector voltage must be equal to vce and actually this is the fun that the operation of the device which become saturated that both junctions become forward biased and therefore vc goes down is very interesting maybe some day we'll explain that okay that's what this digital circuit will want okay that vc should go down to 0.1 volt because that's the zero state of the logic okay in analog we'll never like to do that because what did you yesterday i showed you figure i want to be in linear region of v0 vn characteristics all the time okay therefore i never like to do to saturation area basically i remain in the linear area all the time if possible okay. so this equation is again valid all the time vc is always equal to pbe plus vbc okay this is kirchhoff law between two nodes same voltage can occur okay okay the second uh, third issue which is of relevance in bipolar there is something what we call large signal model but what we are interested later is small signal model but let's see what is large signal we said this is what we are showing you right now dc values essentially is called large signal models typically a bipolar transistor can be shown as base emitter junction is a diode base emitter junction is a diode and base collector junction actually has a collector current which is beta times ib so it's a current source depending on the base current which is decided by the diode at the base emitter junction is that correct whatever vbe i apply e to the power q vbe by kt is the diode current flowing n kt if it is different device and different region but the diode current is the base current is that clear is that clear diode current is the base current and beta time that base current is collector current that is our okay i must show you ic here ic is beta time that's what equations we wrote that's the representation of what i wrote i'm showing you in this circuit now why do i want to always show uh, some numbers as representation because at the end of this when i solve a analog circuit it's a circuit there is no device there i cannot use diode there is that correct because then i have to write exponential terms this i cannot solve in a circuit such thing so what should i want i want equivalent of that in a circuit so i say okay when the diode is on 
it is like a battery of BB on which may be more than 0.6 volt, cutoff is 0.6, maybe 0.7 volt which will assume. So, BB on in all circuits when it is this will be assumed 0.7 volts, okay. If it is less than 0.7, we say it is a going towards off state now. If it is less more than 0.7, it will go to saturation. Say 0.75 device may actually saturate. So, this 0.7 volt is not exact number. Actually, whatever bias you are accordingly, it will calculate. But for circuit people, 0.705 or 0.699 is no meaning, they say 0.7 is good enough, is that clear? So, something which I am now representing is for circuit analysis, device people may not say, for us that's good enough. Okay. Similarly, if you are looking for PNP, since it is a opposite polarity device, the diode is shown opposite way P lower and above, here P above and lower is that clear? So, it is just NP and PNP it represents same. The base current if you are really looking for is the saturation current divided by beta into exponential VB by VT. What is VT I wrote? VT is KT by Q, okay, it is called thermal voltage, okay. VT is called, but this I will stop writing afterwards because in VT in the mass transistor is what? the threshold voltage or turn on voltage. So, I should not confuse that Vt with this Vt. Just now I wrote Vt, but later on I may use Kt by Q everywhere. So, that no uh, misgivings about threshold voltage of mass transistor and Vt are here as thermal voltage. So, similarly I can say Vb on Ib beta times Ib. This is for PNP. Is that okay? Is that simple model. What is missing here? There are many important parameters right now I have not added. For example, there are resistances, capacitances, whatever is going to happen right now I have not shown. This is called simplistic model of a BJT with add on terms in real life. Oh, ye to itna hi dikha. add something. Now, we'll what is the way method? We will first many times what did we do? We actually looked at the device and found some numbers and added there. What is the inverse way? We did measurement and this simple theory did not meet. Are you kya add kar de? Are you yahan thoda resistance dal de de? Oh, drop dik jayega. So, there are two ways of learning any circuit. One is do it and do not find the correct theory. So, add theory from your side which get the model or you create a good model and then verify on the oh, it works, okay, it will, okay. So, when we give a lab, many students ask me, ki, sir, aapne abhi theory to padhaya nahi or lab de diya. Nothing happens because you do first and then when you start looking at theory, oh, now I understand why it, why it happened or you can even start thinking earlier. So, do not go and tell the lab people, oh, professor has not taught this, how can you give me experiment? No, you do an experiment otherwise, okay. And then learn the theory back or you learn the theory first and do experiment later. So, it depends on individual choice as well, but this is way I look at it. So, every time we used to give a lab, people used to say, aapne to abhi khudhi ne nahi padhaya. Mainne ka haan, par kya karo ab. So, this model which I showed you is called large signal model, one minute. And this is called small, we will come back later next time. This is most important thing which I want to use. This is not for BJT, for every model, but here it is shown for this. We will say, the total base current, let us say, is represented by capital I small b. Is that correct? Total base current is small signal current which I represent at small i b, okay, plus the DC base current which is capital cap I capital B. So, small signal plus DC is equal to the total current. Is that correct? So, total current is represented by capital I small b equal to small i b plus capital I b. Is that clear? This is my symbols. So, if I write one way or the other, you must understand what, which terms I am writing. In the case of collector, there is some issue because C, you know, chota or bada is very difficult to draw, okay. So, I made smaller one as a bar to show that. So, this is total I C current which is equal to DC collector current plus AC or small signal current IC. Okay. 
this is a transfer uh, output characteristic of a transistor we will come back to it next time but most interesting part from the circuit why I showed you this just now before we go ahead I plotted collector current versus PCB that is output what is VCB in that figure if you see my VCB which is the in the common emitter circuit this is your output voltage VCB is that current this is your input current okay this is your output current let us look at it this is your IC this is your VCB if this I ground this is my output VC so that is what I say okay oh there I, I may made a mistake I should have I am sorry VCB I am sorry okay, I apologize okay so if I plot out I kept saying it but I think in writing I made mistake so if I plot VC versus IC current which is the output characteristics of a common emitter transistor then for different base current I see different characteristics as I increase base current the collector current beta times IB and in non cases it may not be linearly related it shows different regions of bipolar operations. However, the issue which I want to show in real life if all these characteristics are different IB are extrapolated back okay they all meet at a single voltage which is called early voltage what is early voltage in device if I start increasing VCE essentially I am increasing VCB please tell it VC is equal to VCB plus VB I may fix but as I increase VCB I increase VC is that correct so if I increase VCE as I increase what will happen to base collector junction its depletion layer will start enhancing depends on the doping on both base and collector my majority it may deplete first towards collector because it was kept n minus okay so most of the voltage will be sustained in the collector region but emit base will also start getting depleted is that correct and some voltage base may get punched emitter and collector may get shorted to a depletion layer that is called punch through or called early voltage is that correct at that voltage at that VCB or VCE we call the device is punched okay this is very important parameter for us because if you see this slope please look at it this slope for any current this voltage this is very high typically we early voltage will be 50 volt and 100 volt VC will be 5 volt or less power supply is at best 5 volt typically 3 volt 2.1 volt 1.5 volt. So, this 50 volt divided by the current is what voltage divided by current is what this slope resistance which is this characteristics I am drawing output. So, what resistance I am talking output resistance. So, if I am given early voltage I know the output resistance of the transistor immediately is that correct since I know this at any given current this divided by this is my resistance and they should all show roughly same slopes I mean same because they meet at same point though R0 varies with every base current to some extent because your slopes are different okay but majority at that current wherever you are operating you will know what is the output resistance of the circuit. So, from the circuit point of view if I am given a early voltage indirectly I am telling you whenever you will bias it at a given collector current I know what is the output resistance I have chosen is that clear that is why I showed you this slide that many a times R0 is not specified but early voltage is specified okay and from there R0 is known to us is that clear that is how we will actually start working later thank you for the day.